Our story begins on the banks of the James River, at the site of the first English settlement in North America, Jamestown. This is the original site of the first barracks building in James Fort. What stands today is just a model of the original structure. Here we see a 3D map of the James Fort area. As you can see, the fort wasn't very large. Many of the first settlers did not survive the winter of 1607. This is a site where archaeologists found their remains. Settlers died of starvation, disease, and Indian attacks. Captain John Smith was an important leader for the Jamestown settlement. He brokered peace with the Powhatan tribes and helped the settlers survive the first harsh years. Without him, the colony would have collapsed. Just up the river from Jamestown is the recreated site of the Jamestown Fort in Powhatan Village. Here we are approaching the fort. Watch out for cannon fire. Yeah. Let's investigate some more. All right, let's go on an investigation. Oh, the cannon shot me. Here is the inside of the recreated James Fort. This is approximately what James Fort would have looked like in the 1600s. Here is my little brother Joe trying on Jamestown guard armor. As you can see, it's made of steel and very heavy, but I'm sure it was very effective against native arrows. And here is my brother, Dad and I, in full armor, ready for battle. The settlers carried muskets for hunting and defense. This is a gunsmith who is showing how repairs were made on their guns. My brother had a great time doing this. Maybe he would have made a good gunsmith. This is a Jamestown guard in full gear showing how to fire a musket. Give fire. Ooh. The settlers of Jamestown crossed the Atlantic Ocean on the Susan Constant and two other ships. This is a life-size replica of the Susan Constant. As you can see, it's not as big as you would imagine. It carried 71 colonists from England to America in four and a half months. I can barely stand 10 minutes in our minivan with just my brother. Here's my brother and I looking out a porthole to the New World. The English were not the first to settle the Jamestown area. The Powhatan tribes are living here for thousands of years. We had a chance to see a recreation of a typical Powhatan village. This is the entrance to an Indian dwelling. We took a step inside to see what life was like in one of these buildings. It was very smoky on the inside. This is because they used fires for warmth and to create smoke to cure the meat they hung from the ceiling. You had to sit down since the smoke rises and it's hard to breathe when standing up because the fumes from the smoke would get in your nose. I sat down with one of the tribe's people to make twine out of grass. The twine was used for baskets, fishing nets, rope, and iPods. Here is the inside of another dwelling. You can see the many animal skins they use for clothes and bedding. We got to try our hand at scraping hair from a stretched deer skin. After all that work, I decided to take a break and play a round of corn cob darts, an actual game played by the Powhatan children. Okay, back to work. Next we use an oyster shell to scrape a burned out log to make a dugout canoe. The natives would burn the wood, then scrape the charcoal down to the unburnt wood, and then burn it again until the canoe was formed. This is what a typical finished canoe would have looked like. My brother and I decided to have a bit of fun playing around in it. 
So, from the Jamestown Settlement, we were off to Great Hope's Plantation in Williamsburg. This is a farmer in Dobson plowing a field in order to get it ready to plant tobacco. Tobacco was an important crop for the early colonies. As you can see, all the work was done manually as they did not have machines during this time period. Here is harvested tobacco hanging in its drying shed. The farmers didn't do all this work alone. Many owned as many as 8 to 15 slaves. The slaves who lived in the quarters that looked similar to this. I had some time to speak with this woman about what it was like to be a slave on a plantation in colonial America. These are some of the heritage breed pigs raised on the plantation. The meat curing in the smokehouse is from last season's pigs. This is similar to how the Powhatans cured meat inside their dwellings. Smoking was the most effective meat preservation at the time. What you do with the cotton is you card it, which is almost like brushing those fibers. Watch her, Joe. See what she's like doing? This. And the reason you want to do that is because you get all the knots out so that when you take it to the spinning wheel, you're able to spin it into the thread for those oh, yeah. fibers. Like that. Look at that. Wow. And these are short fibered ones, but the uh, wool is a little bit longer. But you see, yes. So you see all of this has to be done by hand during this time period. So you can imagine that this isn't something that you would do on a big scale. You'd be doing just a small portion of your farming with cotton. My mom loves chicken, so we had to take lots of videos of them. These are heritage breeds it's, were common in Williamsburg. They are the Dominique and Red Dorking breeds. These are heritage Leicester sheep, prized for their long curly fleece. They were used for wool and meat. From the plantation we went to Williamsburg, the first major colonial town established in Virginia. Here come the oxen again. This time the farmer is marching them through the town to the market. Here are some of the images of people in town working and socializing and using common forms of transportation. This is the home of George Wythe, who was a very important leader of the colonists. In this home, he instructed Thomas Jefferson in the subjects of law and science. In this very room, Thomas Jefferson learned about science. It was fun to use some of the instruments they had at the time period. Here is the town magazine where weapons, gunpowder, and ammunition were stored. It was a very important asset during the Revolutionary War. Thomas Jefferson practiced law in this Williamsburg courthouse. A typical punishment of the day was to be placed in the stocks. My brother and I quickly learned not to make fun of the governor. The colonists had many different foods to choose from. Some of it would be unusual for us today. Part of what you could choose if you were lucky enough to have hey. dinner with the governor. So they need to know what you like, what you don't like, what you can or cannot eat. So there would be a lot around with mutton belly. We have veal pilaf, Virginia ham, fried rabbit, and brawn, or what today we might call head cheese. Wait, rabbit? We stopped by the weaver shop to see how she turned cotton and wool into usable thread and yarn for making different textiles. Here we see how she spins the fibers to turn into yarn. Here is some of the finished yarn. The day we were there, they were dyeing it purple, red, and pink. This man was hoping the weaver could help him make a new mustache. Just up the road was the armory, which was home to the blacksmith. 
Here they would make many of the metal tools and implements required by the townspeople and farmers. Oh, what is this thing? It's a hoe for growing tobacco. And this is another hoe. Right, yeah, most of them, the things you see oh, on the table, right buddy, there are farming tools. This is a rake head. Right. And a big rake head. So, uh, those, uh, this goes into the frame around the door, and then this is attached to the door, and you hang the door on the hook. Mm -hmm. It'll so. shut the door. And this is a lock. It is. So, yeah. you stick the key through here. You're fine. Yep. Okay, turn it. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. He's got a key there, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Set the key in the lock. Open the lock the door. Uh, what is uh, this thing? Jump, 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 jump. How gun barrels made. This is a gun barrel? Uh -huh. Gun barrels made by taking a flat bar and welding it into a tube because there was no way to drill a straight hole through a solid bar as long as the gun barrel. So you got to start with a barrel that's got a hole in it and then ream it smooth. Reaming bits can only follow a hole that's there. That's interesting. So this is a... But it's not... It's long as a gun barrel, though. Well, it's just showing you all the steps. So it could be a gun barrel, couldn't it? It, was, it never goes to full cock until you're ready to fire. Half cock, sprinkle, priming charge, of gunpowder in a tray, cover it, carry it in a half cock position, that's the safety. Going off half cock means your safety doesn't work. Oh. Full cock is ready to fire. Now, the resistance to create friction is the result of that steel being closed and a spring holding it closed. Mm. So the, the sparks you see are the result of that uh, friction. Um, if you tap. This is the cooper shop where the town would get its barrels and buckets. During this time period, almost everything was shipped in large barrels called hogsheads. So you may have noticed every building in Williamsburg was made out of bricks. All the bricks were fired in a kiln like this in the brickyard just outside of town. They would light a large fire under the kiln and then fire them for five days. The white bricks you can see at the top have not yet been fired. After firing, the bricks turn red. Readily available local oyster shells were ground up to make mortar. Well, here comes my carriage to take me back home. I hope you had a fun time with me learning about colonial life in America. Bye!